Cardinals rookies get great numbers from Pro Football Focus in Week 10. The Cardinals make a key signing potentially. And how are you going to mentally prepare for the outcome of Week 11's game? Let's discuss. You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. This is Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On A Z Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free wherever you get your podcast. And on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please go to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, uh, turn notifications on, leave a comment, leave a like. It's only going to get better from here. How wildly different things will be this time next season. Your bi-weekly reminder is bi-weekly twice a week or every two weeks. Yes. I think it's every two weeks. But this is, I say this twice a week, appreciate football. We're going into week 11. The season's going to be over before you know it. And while that may be good for the Cardinals win-loss record-wise, we still love football. Please. Uh, this episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The Arizona Cardinals rookies showed out on Sunday in week 10, according to Pro Football Focus. I will be having my buddy, Trevor Sikama, on um, one of the heads of Pro Football Focus over there, the football division. Um, I will be discussing with him why Paris Johnson Jr.'s numbers aren't higher. I know he's had some penalties recently, given up a couple sacks recently. He's played every single snap this season. That's a win. Because remember, and I know this is a different coaching staff, but one thing that Cliff Kingsbury did do right, and one thing that Sean Kugler did do right when he was the offensive line coach and the run game coordinator here with Arizona before, he was unceremoniously fired for uh, allegedly groping a woman, I believe, uh, in Mexico. Um, that story just kind of went away. It's interesting. Steve, uh, doesn't matter. Um, was... If Paris Johnson Jr. wasn't equipped to play yet, he wouldn't be. They'd be starting Kelvin Beecham. And although Kelvin Beecham wouldn't necessarily be an upgrade, at least you know what you'd get from Kelvin Beecham. So he's earned his spot on the right side of the line, Paris Johnson Jr. has, and take what you want from the from the uh, you know pass block run blocking grades that Pro Football Focus provides for him. Now, in week 10, the number one, Grade for a rookie, offensive and defensive players. BJ Ojolari, 85.7, two sacks, eight tackles, had his coming out party, fully healthy, looked fast, looked spry, looked like the Cardinals traded back from the 33rd overall pick that they got in the Will Anderson trade to the high 40s, picked up a third next year, and still got the guy that I wanted them to get in the second round. And it seems to be trending in the direction that that was a good pick. That's one. Fourth rated, Dante Stills, defensive tackle, sixth round pick by Monty Osifor in the 2023 draft with an 80.8 pro football focus rating in week 10. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth. I counted out loud. I didn't count with my fingers because I'm, I'm a grown person. Garrett Williams, third-round pick, Arizona Cardinals, 73.9 from the cornerback position. Going back to my conversation earlier this week, this could potentially go down as the best and deepest is probably the better terminology to use draft class in the history of the Arizona Cardinals. You're going to hear me speak in platitudes. You're going to hear me speak fringe hyperbolically. Because this organization has never had nice things. Sure, Larry Fitzgerald, transcendent. Anquan Bolden and Larry Fitzgerald, when they were here, transcendent. Super Bowl run. Okay, I get it. 
They won a championship, you know, in the, you know, in the Mesozoic era, whenever that was. This team has never had compound interest as pertaining to positive things happening for it. It's never been built that way. It's never been built for a decade worth of success. And what it starts with is one solid draft where you can trust the players that you draft to play the position they were drafted to play. And we're starting to see Garrett Williams is healthy. B.J. Ojolari is healthy. Paris Johnson Jr. hasn't missed a snap. Michael Wilson has played well. He missed two weeks ago, but he played last week. Dante Stills, sixth-round pick. Control Clark played okay early in the season. John Gaines, we'll see after, you know, suffering a, a season-ending injury before the season started. He was showing promise from the center position, and then they had to bring in Jalti Froholt, who's played great. This is how you build. This is how you can afford to do what they're hopefully going to do next offseason, which is throw a bunch of money around to players who deserve it. We're going to fit the culture, fit the talent voids that they have currently, and completely pivot this organization to a trajectory it maybe has never seen before. And you hear that. Sounds hyperbolic. It sounds like I'm making a bigger deal out of one week of pro football focus grades than maybe I should. I see it this way. There's potential for it. There's opportunity for it. There's chance to make it happen. And that's something with the last regime that was no way happening. I call it the restrictor plate for my NASCAR fans out there. The restrictor plate has been taken off this locomotive, this automobile. And now there's nothing but possibility and opportunity for a GM to do what he needs to do, for a head coach to do what he needs to do based upon the talent that that GM who's doing what he needs to do provides for. And that is wildly exciting. For fans like you, for media members like me, for anybody involved, look at what's happening in Detroit. French has never won anything. Look at what's happening now. All it takes is the right leader, even though it may be an abstract choice, an outside-the-box choice. A good leader, a quarterback, which Kyler Murray hopefully is, is, is maturing into being. Young talent at the right places and a culture that everybody buys into. And the Cardinals are years behind Detroit, maybe two. But with that, they may have more talent on their roster than Detroit started with. And that's something the Cardinals have to their benefit. All we can do is gauge what we've seen up until this point. And up until this point, regardless of win-loss, and regardless of if they really put 60 minutes together in a game early in the season, we were seeing competency, cohesion, and a team that plays their asses off every game day. There's no question on if these guys are prepared or not. Talent level, yeah, there's some questions. It's, it's a process. What they've done so far is put the – they're like in the waiting room of putting the NFL on notice. They're not there yet, obviously. But if they continue down this road and then you have talent infused into it in the necessary spots, this team could take off like a rocket ship. And that's why these grades for these rookies midway through a lost season as it pertains to win-loss is massive. Doesn't matter who the opponent is. None of these guys were first-round pick. First, sixth, third. No, second, sixth, third. In order. Giddy up, baby. On the Monty Austin Ford train. So far, so good. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. The Cardinals sign a running back. A running back that I thought on Sunday about, oh, somebody, some team should snag him. He never really got the chance when he was playing. Who is it? What does it mean? What are the, what's the trajectory? What does it mean for James Conner? Are there any downsides? I'll hit them all as we roll on here on 
the Locked On Podcast Network. Alex Lancey, Locked On Cardinals. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by LinkedIn. I have a personal history with LinkedIn. Um, not like, you know, like we didn't date or, you know, I didn't, it's not a family member or anything personal like that. But um, I was on LinkedIn a lot when I was looking for jobs. I was always doing, you know, locked on Cardinals and um, I wanted to pivot away from radio. And I was kind of looking at what I wanted to do. And LinkedIn is, was, you know, a, a breath of fresh air for me. Now, if you're on the other side and you're looking for people like me and you've got job openings, LinkedIn jobs has you covered. You got to make a post, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. You can use simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skill set and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is also brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into the action, man. It's week 11. Where the hell have you been? Go to FanDuel, doc, go to FanDuel America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. And you know, the app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including sp spreads, player props, over-unders. Like, this is the perfect time of year to look at those NFL futures. Super Bowl predictions. Who's going to make the Super Bowl? Who's going to win specific divisions? The odds are going to change drastically from now, you know, maybe to next week and the week after. FanDuel's got you covered for all of it. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clancy here. Thanks for hanging out. I enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it, everydayers. Um, the DMs have kind of dried up here. If you want topics to discuss, DM me. I can talk about things all day long. I have no problem, you know, blabbering my big dumb face. But if there's something specific you want to talk about, uh, send me a DM. I love interacting with people, truly. Debates. Agreeing with me, whatever it is. I want to make this family and even tighter knit every single damn day. The Cardinals sign or claim Michael Carter off waivers. Who is Michael Carter? Let's jump back to the 2020 slash 2021 college football season where he shared a backfield with a running back named Javante Williams in North Carolina, who is their quarterback, one Sam Howell. Now the quarterback of the Washington Commanders. And while the majority of the time Javante Williams got most of the pub, Michael Carter looked like the, you know, the, the second act. He's a little bit smaller. Uh, Sam Howell was hucking it all over the yard. Um, Michael Williams, 5'8", speedster, was a fourth-round pick. So contractually, he's under contract for one more season after this season. At, and team-friendly is the understatement of all understatements as pertaining to his contract. Okay, so the Cardinals have that check. He signed a four-year, $3.8 million deal when he got drafted as a fourth rounder, and they've got he's got one more year on his deal. Okay, what has he done in the NFL so far? He's, in 2021, he rushed for 639 yards and four touchdowns. In 2022, he played 16 games, ran for 400 yards and three touchdowns. He was never the lead guy. They had a, I mean, they had Le'Veon Bell, I think, was there. They had a bunch of just guys over and over and over again. And he never really got a shot. And what have we been talking about here on Locked on Cardinals? I'm sure other publications, but, you know, I'm this is Locked on Cardinals, so we discuss what we discuss on here. Just a compliment to James Conner. I didn't think it was necessarily going to be for this season, but it is. And I think it's going to be a fantastic addition, a little speed to go along with James Conner. The Cardinals aren't making the playoffs this year. Sorry if I spoiled your dreams, your hopes and dreams. Um Finding out what works for the future. I could see Michael Carter's skill set working brilliantly with Drew Petz in his offense. I don't know if they use him as a gadget guy. I don't know if they use him between the tackles. I don't know if he'd just be purely off tackle, you know, jet sweeps 
whatever it is. And the one thing that he will be able to provide is an RPO with Kyler Murray with two speedsters, regardless of who ends up with the ball. And I think that his very, very future, like the foresight that Monty Ossoford had after he was cut and put on waivers by the Jets a couple days ago, I think is this is a win-win. I don't, even, I don't even know if he's going to see the field. I don't know if Amari DiMercato is going to come back healthy and they're going to use him as the second guy. What I do know is, by many metrics, Keontae Ingram is one of the worst running backs in the NFL. And I know that it's tough. Like, I have this theory. Um, again, it, it's because basketball is my first love, so I, I kind of go back to basketball with some of these analogies. Many players, so say basketball, so they play AAU ball. They're always the star. High school, middle school, high school, AAU, whatever. They're always the star. They always start, they play the majority of the minutes, and they're used to, you know, doing layup drills, sweat and still with their warms, take it off, go play basketball. A lot of times it's difficult for players going into the NBA to sit on the bench and become a bench player early. It's not anything they've ever done before. So with Keontae Ingram, he was never really given, like he was in spots given first team reps. Like you're going to get 25 carries today. He never really got that. You know, it was Eno Benjamin early last year before they cut him, you know, with James Conner hurt. And then, you know, the last, the, the, you know, the last five, six, seven games of last year were, were kind of throwaways anyway. He never really got a shot. So I don't know if Keontae Ingram just isn't a good running back. He played a couple very good, you know, very reputable schools in college. Um, USC was the last one. But, you know, all in all, I, I'm not really sure as to why, but the Michael Carter signing, I think, is going to be. Because remember, a lot of what I've been talking about this offseason and through the first 10 weeks is the Cardinals need to find their stars for the future or players that have the potential to be stars in an effort to save drafting high draft capital for positions that they drafted in 2023. And Michael Carter, while I think we would have known already if he was going to be a star in this league, as the NFL pivots to a truly, you know, running back by committee system, on top of the fact that James Conner is not getting any younger, he just got off injury. I've screamed from the mountaintops for the last two years that he should only be touching the ball 55 or 60% of the time. Having a change of pace guy like Michael Carter on the Arizona Cardinals can do nothing but help. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I think these little key additions are what a young team who's trying to build out a roster need. And the Cardinals need a good run game to not only be able to facilitate the play action so Kyler Murray can do what he does, but also keep Drew Petzing from having to use design runs in an effort to move the ball down the field when offense is stuck. So I think this is a home run, low risk, potentially high reward. There's applications out for Arizona Cardinals for the future. And I think that his skill set in Michael Carter, he had he was exemplary in college. He's got bursts that they need. They've got burners in the wide receiver position. They need one from the running back position, not named Kyler Murray when their design runs or RPOs or whatever it may be. So I think this was a home run. We'll see what happens. I'm stoked. I said this past weekend, because Michael Carter got on the field for a second, like, man, they are wasting his talent. And after bringing in, you know, uh, Brees Hall, obviously drafting him and, and bringing in Dalvin Cook this offseason, maybe Michael Carter is not fit for the NFL game. I find it hard to believe with his speed that the Cardinals couldn't find a spot for him to play meaningful snaps this season and maybe on into the future. There is an existential and mental crisis that I've been going through for the better part of three months now, maybe four when, the, when I saw the schedule come out. What do you want the outcome to be for the Arizona Cardinals when they travel to Houston on Sunday? Because this is the Cardinals 2024 draft pick bowl. What does it mean? What should you be rooting for? Let's discuss as we roll on here. Crossover or not crossover. Yikes. Um, that's tomorrow. I get, I'm doing crossover Thursday with John Hickman from Locked On Texans, one of my favorites here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This episode of the Wednesday edition of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is badass. Prize Picks is easy. Prize Picks is fun. Prize Picks also um, is super convenient. Okay. Uh, with basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey 
at a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made in receptions. It's so much more fun. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Okay, so go to prizepicks.com and uh, prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy, your final segment again, John Hickman and myself crossover Thursday tomorrow brought to you by prize picks. We'll break down the trade on draft day. John and I could talk for two and a half hours and we we're going to have to cut it down to 30 minutes, which will be a challenge, but we will do it for you Every day, or thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Go to the YouTube channel, like, subscribe, turn notifications on, send me DMs on Twitter, man. Let's um, I could always use topic ideas, um, especially you know, I'll give you a shout out. Let's just flood my DMs. Let's let's make these last two months of the NFL season fun. Um, how do you mentally approach Sunday? The Cardinals have Houston Texans pick. The Cardinals have their own. If you listen to Tengath on Tuesday yesterday, you know the Cardinals have the fourth overall pick as of now, and the Texans have the 20th as they they slid into one of the wild card spots after beating Cincinnati in wild fashion, wild fashion uh, in week 10. Um, this answer is a lot easier than I thought it would be when the season started because the odds were out. All the odds were out. The Cardinals are going to have the first and second overall pick. And then people realized that CJ Stroud could play football, and he was good. And then, you know, Tank Dell is good. And then, you know, Noah Brown from the Cowboys is good. And Dalton Schultz, Schultz from the Cowboys is good. And Nico Collins is good. And then they're good. So now they have more wins than losses. And that's bad for the Cardinals. But going into Sunday, just go win. This is this is where I'm at. And I've said it when Kyler Murray came back. It's like you'd much rather have a quarterback one than a top three pick. You'd much rather win a handful of games in 2024 then have that second overall pick because you knew that Kyler Murray isn't it. You have to start from scratch. You have to work on trading Kyler Murray, which is a pseudo untradeable contract. You'd be starting completely from scratch again, which is not what you want to do. You want to gain this momentum. And I think the Cardinals through at least one week with Kyler Murray shows that things are going to get better, not worse, barring any sort of injury, barring any sort of unforeseen events. The Cardinals are going to trend in a more positive direction for the remainder of 2023. And I'd much rather see the Cardinals win on Sunday, then lose. Now, it would drop them probably to seven, but the important part, there are 10 teams with four or five wins, I believe. 10. Maybe 11 now because, because Denver won on Monday night. 11, four or five wins, okay? So if the Cardinals win, they go to three and eight. Texans lose, they go to five and five. That could drop them four or five spots. It's more important to me that the Texans pick is as high as possible. High meaning closest to the number one. With the Cardinals, they're going to pick top 10 regardless. Okay? So if the Cardinals pick eighth and they pick 14th, I'd much rather that than fourth and 20th or fifth and 20th. I mean, Monty Osborne can do weird things. I mean, he could trade future capital or, you know, current capital to move that Texans pick up to the top 10. We don't know. The bottom line is the Cardinals need everything. They need everything. So you can X out them drafting a running back in the first round. You can X out them drafting a quarterback in the first round. You can X out them drafting a safety in the first round. Everything else on the table. So look at what the Ravens have done. Look at what the Eagles have done. Doesn't matter if you draft in the top three, you draft in the top 15, you draft in the top 20, you draft in the first round. You can find your stars for the future, regardless of where you draft. It will take away the Marvin Harrison Jr. dream. Sure. There's going to be another one in two years. There's going to be another dream, I mean, for somebody else. Dream last year was Will Anderson. There's going to be a dream every year. Jalen Carter was last year. You're going to dream. You need to eat your vegetables before you can draft the dream players, unless the dream player is an offensive line or an edge rusher or interior defensive line for the future. So going into Sunday, I'd love to see the Cardinals come out with the win. The Texans are one of – they've got more buzz around them than, than the Bills – then the Chiefs this year, they've got more buzz than I know the Chiefs are pretty much on autopilot at seven and two. 
But the Texans are one of the most fun teams in football. And then going back to the actual trade itself, and I'm going to talk, I'm going to ask John about this tomorrow. Doesn't that trade seem like a perfect 100% even splitting hairs, even trade for both? Both teams got what they wanted. Cardinals needed future draft capital. The Texans wanted a quarterback for the future. They wanted their edge rusher for the future. They got this year. And they don't draft in the first round or, or third round next year. I think everybody wins. And very rarely do trades, especially with trades between the Cardinals and the Texans, very rarely is it a perfect, even Steven trade. And I think both teams won out to the millionth decimal point for what they wanted to achieve with the trade. It'll be fascinating. John Hinkman, John Hickman, locked on Texans. Alex Clancy, locked on Cardinals. We'll be doing our crossover Thursday tomorrow. I will talk to you then.